Underwater banging sounds have been detected in the search for the missing Titanic sub, with the five people on board now having as little as 24 hours before their oxygen runs out. That rescue mission is counting down the hours. Meanwhile, former Chief Medical Officer Dame Sally Davis has told the COVID inquiry that lockdown damaged a generation of children. She also apologised to families bereaved by the pandemic. And number 10 has told teachers they must intervene to stop children identifying as animals as a school at the centre of the row that people's identifying as a cat uh, faces a government investigation. Extraordinary story that. Six minutes past nine is the time. This is Talk Breakfast. Well, thank you very much indeed for your company. Uh, I've been asking you to get in touch this morning uh, over uh, uh, the missing Titanic sub um, as rescuers searching for that sub have heard banging sounds, which somebody could be a sign of life. I'd love to know your reaction. We've had two extraordinary calls. Uh, one, uh, Colin, we spoke to you yesterday as well, uh, who is a, an expert at working uh, with uh, remote controlled vehicles under the ocean floor. Uh, we also spoke to Riley Sturbeck, uh, who uh, works at basically next to uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the company which uh, actually operates uh, this sub. Uh, but the real development this morning uh, has been uh, a tweet put out by the US Coast Guard's North East Command confirming some media reports overnight that sounds had been detected by a Canadian search plane. Uh, their tweet uh, this morning at about six o'clock this morning UK time uh, said Canadian P3 aircraft detected underwater noises in the search area. As a result, ROV operations, that's remote operated vehicle operations, were relocated in an attempt to explore the origin of the noises. These ROV searches have yielded negative results but continue. Now the crucial thing here uh, is uh, that uh, these banging noises have um, detected uh, every half hour uh, for, for a few hours, 30 minute intervals uh, being heard yesterday it would appear by one of the aircraft being used for the overhead search. We've also got vessels on the surface not just uh, looking for this sub if it has reappeared on the surface uh, of the Atlantic in very poor conditions 370 miles from the Newfoundland coast of Canada uh, but also searching underwater as well. So we've got three pronged uh, searches going on. Um, additional sonar had been used four hours later. The bangings could still be heard from these first these first soundings. Now, there is some hope this could be signs of human life inside that sub. Five people on board, uh, five men, one as young as 19 years old, the son of a Pakistani uh, businessman, uh, bo both men are British citizens, also uh, a, a British uh, uh, bolty billionaire, Hamish Harding, uh, along with the owner of the Ocean Gate sub, Titan, uh, and a French explorer. Um, they were uh, basically lost contact with the subs uh uh, boat on the surface an hour and 45 minutes into an eight hour uh, mission to go down to the Titanic. 3,800 uh, feet underground, underwater apologies, uh, they lost contact. Now that search area has been widened but there are serious concerns that there, any attempt to find these men will be hampered by uh, frankly the fact that we are looking as one person said earlier to us on the show, a needle in a haystack whilst blindfolded. Well, let's talk once again to Rear Admiral Roger Lane Knott. He's a former senior flag officer of the Royal Navy and he's also a former NATO commander of submarines. He joined us yesterday to talk about this story when it first emerged and joins us once again, bring his expertise. Thank you so much indeed for joining us again, Roger. Good morning, Julia. Um, look, there, I have to say, I think an awful lot of us by last night, we had the Coast Guard giving a press conference yesterday, US Coast Guard, an update without any sign of, of this sub being found. I think a lot of us did lose hope. People are saying maybe a 1% chance of finding these men alive and, and rescuing them. Um, the, the, the sound of this banging giving a lot of hope. What's your reaction to that revelation from the Coast Guard? Well, I've spent a lot of time underwater and there's all sorts of sounds under there and you can to try and classify them what they actually are um, is extremely difficult yeah uh, you can tell biological stuff but tapping on hulls well really uh, i think it's is a bit grasping at straws um if you were if you were in that submarine now and you were tapping on the hull assuming that the noise would get out from a titanium hull etc would you be doing it every half an hour? You'd be doing it every five minutes, that, surely. That was my first thought, that actually you ought to be taking, you ought to take the risk of being something. You, you want it to be a regular sound. You'd be something, doing it all the time. Yeah, and something be that doing wouldn't, be un, wouldn't be natural sound, yeah. And you, you could tap out SOS in Morse code. You'd be doing something very different. You'd be, uh, anyway, I, I think they're clutching at straws here. There, there's so many sounds out there in the ocean, particularly in an area like that and around a wreck, 
with with the Titanic is probably that it's not moving very much with yeah. their groans and all the rest of it. So um, it's a very imprecise art trying to classify uh, noises from the ocean. And I yeah. have my doubts that there's anything in this. And and I mean, I suppose we were looking for hope, weren't we? We are. Yeah. But but um, realistically, I don't think you can read it. And I, having realised that they've put an ROV down where they think it was, if I don't know how on earth they've managed to cross fix it, uh, but if they put an ROV down and there's nothing, then that really says it all. Well, um, indeed. I mean, the best hopes we were discussing this yesterday were that um, this, this the, the the submarine had uh, the Titan uh, submersible. Sorry, uh, will have realised we've lost contact, we've lost power, and jettison some ballast, some uh, weights, and yeah. have risen to the surface. And it's bobbing around on the surface somewhere. And it's just a matter of time. Can they be found within the next roughly 24 hours? When we we think that they still will have oxygen. That's the best case scenario, though. The Coast Guard was saying yesterday we're looking at you know 40 hours. That was at 6 p.m last yeah. night and that's best case scenario assuming people haven't been panicked you've got five grown men in this tiny little 21 foot capsule some people are saying look this is a tomb almost um but of course people panicking power loss big concerns about you know whether or not the the air could well, you know they've been able to remove the carbon dioxide and things like that you know monoxide and it's I mean, it's a real concern that that actually whether or not these men are still alive but crucially even if they are still alive even if they're on the surface um, they can't open the capsule. It can only be opened from outside. Yes, that's absolutely right. They, there are 17 bolts on this uh, uh, um, hatch uh, that are bolted from the outside. So even if they were on the surface, they couldn't get out until somebody came and undid all those bolts. I, I, it's a very strange way of approaching things, in my view. Yeah. But, um, uh, so I, I think they'll be probably trying to remain calm. I think they'll be getting probably uncomfortable um i think they'll be talking a lot about uh what else they can do uh they'll be looking at every type of system that they've got yeah. i suspect they've done that 10 times over by now yeah. and and realistically they could have dropped the weights but if there if there's nothing else to take push them up um you know they're, they're, i think it's got to be some sort of power issue because yeah. if you look if you look at the picture up on the top left there's there's thrusters that go forward and there's thrusters that go up and down so they can turn and so i suspect there's a power problem in yeah. my opinion that seems to be the most the most likely explanation um the sun front page uh, is today is uh, i was booked on doomed titanic sub this is a yes. big thrill seeker chris brown he paid a deposit for this yeah. mission then he said i've got so many safety concerns this doesn't look legit you know basically got a games console operating it um it's uh, made of carbon fiber he said he just didn't think this was safe um there, there's a waiver form for the people the five men who've gone down this is not the first mission but you know he basically mentions the word death three times do you think that adequate safety measures were taken in the event of a catastrophic failure like this well uh, it's it's difficult to say from at this stage now but i i mean there's no doubt we have to look at this in more detail that uh, my my concern i think is there are certainly some flaws with the with the actual vessel itself and some of the procedures around it and maybe even some of the design and the equipment um uh, there's certainly that but also if, if you were going off on an operation like this, wouldn't you have um, a, a submers another submersible or an, an ROV sitting in the tender uh, in your mothership yeah. ready if, to help if there was a problem? Well, we understand the sister ship, Cyclops, is actually being mended at the current time. We spoke to someone well, who then he should have Well, then he should have postponed the dive until it was ready. Uh, is this where, I mean, you know, uh, perhaps, you know, uh, bravery, some would say foolhardiness, but also money talks, and this is a commercial operation, $250,000 uh, for each man to go down, um, that actually, you know, it'd been delayed again and again because of poor weather, and eventually, no, we can go out. They left Friday, they left the actual... Uh, the coast and then uh, on yeah. Sunday they launched and 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 that actually there is an issue where you know people get impatient yeah let's do it anyway when actually the conditions maybe weren't right or there were concerns I and mean, we just don't know that yet that's a that's no. co co conjecture of course but is that a concern yeah I think I think I think probably there's a mixture of people with lots of money who are great explorers and they want to do it so the pressure is on the commercial companies to get on and do it because yeah. they they want the money and be the, the the kudos of having great explorers going doing this sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, what I would say is there must have been reasonable confidence because the French pilot 
uh, who is an experienced guy, wouldn't have done that if he didn't think the systems were working all yeah. right. And that's, that's the thing. My... These are these are all. I mean, you know, certainly three of the uh, men on board, uh, the, the man who owns Ocean, yeah. uh, got the, the, uh, the, the professional. They are professional. The French expert. They, they they know what they're doing. Even the British billionaire, Hamish Macdonald, he's he's travelled and obviously he's been into space. Uh, yeah. You know, we've spoken to friends Absolutely. of his. There's no doubt at all they are experienced. I mean, look, people know the risks. Um, is this a risk? I mean, you know, you're a former rear admiral. Is this a risk you would take? Um, probably when my 20s, I might have done. <laughs> not sure I take it now. <laughs> that's that's an interesting weighing up. Look, there is a lot of there is still, I mean, a lot of fears for what's happened. We are we are talking about five human lives. One of them only 19 years old, Suleiman, the son yeah. uh, of one of the others on board. Um, and I think that's the person who I most of, I most fear for. I think you know, just as a mum. Yeah. Um, yeah. um, you know, we, we've got to keep hope up to hope. It's right for the Coast Guard to throw. And all the other private organisations involved as well to yes. throw everything at this in the chart. Yeah. If there is even a scintilla of hope to rescue these men, no, no, absolutely, and and we must continue with the with the searches uh, as long as we can. As I said yesterday, the priority is to find it first. Uh, but they, it looks from what I've been reading and hearing the other ships coming out and so forth yeah. and talking to other people, it's clear that they are gearing up for a rescue and they're trying to get as many assets there as they yeah. can. Uh, who are capable of doing something, yeah. depending where what they find and where they find but it. But that's it. They have to find the sub first. I mean, say that's one of our guests said earlier, looking for a needle in a haystack while blindfolded. You need to remember, we're 350, 70 miles from the coast. We are 3,800 yeah. feet down, yeah. and it's a tiny, it's a tiny vessel in the pitch dark. I mean, and and also it's not metal. It's a it's a carbon fibre hull. One of our guests previously, uh, Dr. Chris Parry, Rear Admiral, was saying, look, you know, pretty hard to find something that's not metal in particular. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there, there is an interesting um, piece that I read as well. There's a company in Guernsey that actually has a submersible, uh, and uh, uh, there are talks that they offered themselves and they were turned down by the Coast Guard. Now, you read what you like into that, how mm. true it is. Uh, and, and it may be that it was the wrong type of vessel. I don't yeah. know enough about it. I have tried to research it. But I think that the, the fact is that they will be trying to muster all the machinery and vehicles that they can. There are at least four ships out there now um, with, with varying capabilities. So I think we have to see um, uh, how they're preparing. If, if they've got their act together and they're really preparing so that as soon as they find it, they can go, then there's a chance, I think. Yeah, indeed. But, um, do, we, do we have to accept, look, no, whether it's space exploration, whether it's, you know, uh, many years ago, you know, uh, Christopher Columbus and others setting sail across the Atlantic in search of the new world, whether it's missions like this to go to the bottom of the ocean, there is a level of risk. It's a much higher level of risk than most of us would ever be willing to take. But we have to accept there is that level of risk. These men knew what they were doing and, and unfortunately yeah. it hasn't paid off. I mean, you're right. I, I mean, that people will always take risks, and one can argue to a certain extent that that's how the world has actually, um, uh, you know, moved forward because people have pushed boundaries. I mean, I can remember the first time during the, during the Falklands when I suddenly was required to do something like 10,000, 11,000 miles in a short period of time. Um, uh, you know, trying to deal with your ship's company's um, emotions when out of nowhere you were going to war but then that's what you were trained for and it was quite extraordinary how they responded so i feel that they will be quite calm and and okay it'll getting it's probably will be getting somewhat frustrating now indeed well look let's hope next time we speak to you uh roger lane not that uh, we've got some good news uh that certainly this time tomorrow I guess, you know, time will have run out, realistically, if the men on the submarine, if they're not rescued. Our hopes will be really completely dashed that we can find them alive. But five souls on board. Rear Admiral Roger Lane Notter, former NATO commander of submarines, thank you so much for your expertise.